This is your Catholic Daily Journal for Sunday, March the 24th, 2019. It's the anniversary of the tragic Monday evening in which the outspoken Archbishop of El Salvador, Monsignor Oscar Romero, was gunned down in the small chapel of El Hospital de la Divina Providencia. He had given a powerful sermon at the cathedral the day before, imploring government soldiers not to obey orders to oppress or to deny human rights. The next day, he attended a day of recollection and prayer led by Opus Dei. He meditated on the priesthood. That evening, as he was offering Mass, he finished his brief sermon and walked over to the altar. And just as he arrived, a red car screeched to a stop at the street door. A single gunman jumped out, took two shots at the bishop, one of them hitting him directly in the chest, and then the gunman fled the scene. Six days later at his funeral, more gunmen showed up, threw smoke grenades into the crowd, and opened fire, killing 31 mourners. Romero was a hero of the ordinary people, and he lived his beliefs about Christ's love for the poor. As with other modern saints, he's often held up as a paragon of this or that uncatholic ideology. Romero publicly stated many times that liberation theology was just Marxism and that it hurt the poor rather than help them. And yet modern proponents of that non-Catholic belief often point to Romero as their ideological patron. In reality, he was a holy priest who loved the Lord and who preached the truth and who was martyred for what he preached. On the other side of the pond today in 1829, the UK finally passed a Relief Act in which Roman Catholics were no longer barred from serving in Parliament. The long history of Catholic persecution in the UK is still alive and well because the Church of England is formally part of the government. And there are many government positions which cannot be held by Catholics or indeed anyone who is not formally a member of the Church of England. There are several seats in the House of Lords which are held ex officio by bishops of this or that or the other Anglican archdiocese. The Prime Minister, too, must be formally a member of the Church of England. Famously, Tony Blair was accepted into the Catholic Church almost immediately upon his departure from Number 10. The Relief Act of 1829 opened the doors, though, to the House of Commons. The incredible history of Catholic persecution and the almost comic decline of the Church of England today is worth studying, though. Of particular interest are those royals who have renounced their titles in order to become Catholic for the good of their souls. On the other side of the world today, back in 1989, the gigantic oil tanker Exxon Valdez ran aground in Prince William Sound in Alaska. It spilled 240,000 barrels of crude oil, which is about 38,000 cubic liters by volume. The disaster was on every news channel, and the newly installed school news network, Channel One, covered it as well. Pictures and video of dead birds and fish covered in crude became a rallying cry for environmentalism and renewable energy. The crisis was made worse because it was so remote which made the cleanup all the more difficult. And because the contaminated areas were very heavily fished waters and rich in resources. The side effects included the deaths of between 100 and 250,000 seabirds, at least 2,800 sea otters, along with 12 river otters, 300 harbor seals, 247 bald eagles, and at least 22 orcas along with an immeasurable number of salmon and herring. After 20 years, the EPA was happy to report that there had been no measurable lasting impact, at least environmentally speaking, of the spill. But it did cause a reevaluation of laws and procedures around shipping oil and cleaning up oil spills, which is no small thing. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.